Hey everyone, we're doing something different today. We're going to look at old Atari commercials. I guess what we're going to do is we'll show it once and then we'll go back and I'll make fun of it or talk about it or whatever. But uh, uh, this first one here, we're going to we're going to go like from 81 ish I, uh, up through 83 with a few things. Actually, I need to move one of these. It's in the uh, wrong place. OK, drink. So the first one is kind of the the basic what you would have seen at the time period by our product which the have you played atari today came from and it was just generic atari it wasn't like targeting they the really enemies. wanted uh, this is one of them remember that that like missile command uh-huh you know there's two of these that they're like buy missile command because it's got pretty pixels that did go it flash. come with the game or was it just a console and you had to buy cartridges separately? i don't remember because i wasn't born I was born, but I would have been a fetus. I mean, I was I was born in 83. We had an Atari when I was born. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I played Atari before I played Nintendo. But I don't know if it came with anything I, We had an Atari not. when I was in kindergarten. I, I literally did no research on this beforehand, Adam. I'm sorry. You're making me have do your story. Why? I'll look okay. it up, I guess. I probably have told this story before, but I'll just tell it. So when we lived um, in a different location than we do now, uh, like we were kind of away from family and everything, and I, we had an Atari to play, and I was um, told one of the neighborhood kids, and she was a little older than I was, like a couple grades older, um, and she would come over and play, and all summer long she would come over and play the Atari, and then one day I asked her to come over and hang out and play, and she's like, I don't need to come over anymore. We got our own Atari now. Thanks. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, that's when I realized for the first time in my life that some people aren't friends with you because of you. They're friends with you because of what you can get them. <laughs> what what you can do for them. Yeah. And that was crushing for a kindergartner. <laughs> <laughs> so it did come with a game back when it was the Atari VCS. Um, it came with Combat. Oh, I love combat. That was a good game. And then it eventually came with Pac-Man. And we have two Pac-Man commercials we're going to look at today. So so here we go. Here, here's kind of the... I have two like this of the Have You Played Atari today. So here's the first one. They say it's rare. I don't know why they say... I guess because it's hard to find now. These were not rare commercials in 1981. There were three channels. You were, <laughs> you were going to see this commercial. So here we go. Oh. Those old reruns keep your family apart. Does your dog fall asleep at the very start? Then turn off the TV. And here's what you can see. When you play a game from Atari. Have you played Atari today? With an Atari game, a flick of the switch turns your TV set into a playground. And your family room into a family room. Have you played Atari today? So, have you played Atari today? No. <laughs> I have not. But, I could. Uh, I have uh, a functional uh, one. Yeah, I have, I have one. Uh, one of the things that I was just like, I love that this like blows their minds. It's like, here we go. We're turning it on. Missile Command! Look at those lines. Oh, he's just like, uh, <laughs> Flashing pixels. He's like, look, honey, this is what you could be doing to my dick. Maybe that's what they think they're watching. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, what? Adult what? video games. Oh, well, well, that flashing look. It's tentilating. And the, the kid's just like, this is the best thing. This is barren sex. He's, he's like, and then he's like, he's like, he's ah, like, ah, the world ended. Because that's what happens in Missile Command when yeah. you lose. Cold War. Yay. The, the Russians. An Atari game, a flick of the and I love how it's like, look, if you press this switch, the game's on. Isn't that neat? <laughs> The, well, that one person over there, what in the world was going... Hold on. Considering how fast that booted up for back then, that I know. actually is pretty It's cool. like, wow. Well, because computers were just... And this was considered a computer you know, system. Of the, yeah, home computer. What is going on here? It's just like, did is they have a heart any... attack? Well, did the it... flashing lights gave her <laughs> epileptic it, seizures. It could have. And your family it's a guy. Oh. Family. Yeah, he literally just died. So the the... The man of the house literally just died, so no more Atari games. No. They were too expensive back, and back then. Back then, most people only had one working parent. <laughs> yeah. And I always love, you know, the dun, 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 for the Have You Played Atari Today. And this is kind of like, you know, 
what I think of. I love the like the rainbow going with. It was That's just, so eighties. Yeah, like, early eighties, mind yeah. you, because it was eighty one. So it's still technically the seventies. <laughs> so yeah, like when they built the stuff. Yeah. Well, Atari came uh, came out seventy eight. Mm-hmm. So you know it had already been around for a while because they they were wanting to get the fifty two hundred out. People were, but. Oh, what's his... Why well, I can't think of it. They were just like, no, this one's selling. Why would we upgrade? And it's like, well, because other people are coming out with better systems. Very soon. And you need to get it out there. But, you know, by that point, it was too late. The rare part is probably because people back then didn't have a way of recording yeah. videos very... Because, I mean, that's before, like, well, you could, Betamax you could, or VHS was at the house. You too. can get one for, like, $3,000. Yeah. Uh, so this one, once again, they love Missile Command. Probably because that was the game that they were like trying to push to buy at the time. Well, it was a huge game in the arcade. Uh, I mean, it was in Terminator Two. You know when they play. I mean, you know it was a pretty big game. But uh, this one's just called the 1981 2600 commercial. So here it goes. Video pinball, my husband is acting funny lately. With Atari games so ingenious, so involving, so intense, I ask you, Atari Anonymous, is this problem contagious? So I like this one's just like burp, 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 burp. But uh there's a lot of things in this that that make me smile. Uh, first off, it's like you know this game actually is a pretty fun game, but the kid, it's like I'm one of these kids from this isn't made for jocks. This is just yeah. the, the poor kid at home and he's like, Take me to your leader. Yeah, I know he's like talking he, like a computer. He's like, like, the, like Bender. He's like, like the sci fi kid, you know, that gets comic books that now everyone's like, Oh, that's awesome, but back then they're like He's probably like one of those Stranger Things kids. Yeah, and, or now that's like the cool thing. But back yeah. then it was not. And the dog's like, what? No, why won't you let me play? He game? looks like the dog from that Shaggy Dog. Yeah, the yeah. Shaggy Dog. Yeah. And I don't even know what this one is. Uh, that's someone, one of those. Um, the, the the poor daughter like ha- having fun. Now, well, kudos for them for having like all age groups and different genders and everything. This scares me. He's like, look how he's like holding. The controller. It's like... And maniacal laughter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where am I? <laughs> what am I... And even oh, the dog gets there, to play. We need to see what video games they were trying to sell in that. Uh, I saw Air to Sea Battle. Um, It's going to be hard to see. I think Combat's in there. Yeah, Combat's down there. Combat? Combat. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. It's not clear enough to really read. Tic-tac-toe. Circus Circus Atari, 3D tic-tac-toe. Is that Casino? Uh, Right below Circus. Circus Atari. Uh, No, that's Combat. Oh, they're both Combat? Like the black ones. Oh, oh, I didn't even see that one. That shows how... Yeah, that's Casino. Uh, Missile Command. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't tell. The rest of them are just too blurry. Yeah. I think that one was Space Invaders. Uh, very possible. Which hold on. See how it has a spaceship on it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like invade. I mean, I don't see an R. I don't know. Very well, could be. And I can't tell the rest. This <laughs> if that was beat him and eat him. <laughs> Did they have um like those productivity cartridges where you could like type and stuff on the Atari like the Coleco I don't pad. you're asking questions no I'm just speaking I have sense of, like thinking out loud and the next one here is the first Pac-Man commercial as far as we were able to discern and it's concerning so when you watch it you'll see why it's oh God, concerning this is bad first the Pac-Man eats through a maze of dots then the Pac-Man heads for the corner spot then he eats his fill of a power pill and then all those ghosts turn blue boo and pac-man eats them all too have you played pac-man it's the new video computer game everyone's talking about and naturally it's from atari have you played atari today (laughs) and naturally it's from atari now what's the big problem with that it was all drawn (laughs) 
And not, it wasn't even animated animated. It was like a series of pictures. We're not going to show you what our big deal game that was like the game breaker thing. Like the first thing, it's like, Mario. and it's like, what is going on? Well, getting Pac-Man was such a big deal because it was such, it was the first huge video game fanatical thing. I mean, we haven't had Pac-Man fever going on. I can't remember if it was this one when we watched it or if it's and the next like one. jerking that but, thing. When they talk about, I think it's this one because they were singing basically how you play the game. Yeah, right. He he slips up and he does not say Pac Man. He says the Puck Man. Oh, does he? I couldn't I, tell. Uh, like there was one place where he says the Puck Man. Fuck it, Man. You you know how like that was his original name was Puck in Man. Japan. Yeah, yeah, and they didn't over here because people would call it Fuck Man. Yeah. Well, wouldn't call it. They would. Scratch they were afraid they would change yeah. the the machines to to do it but yeah it's like the big issue with this commercial is you're not seeing anything of what the game is and we all know that the pac-man for atari 2600 is atrocious and one of the reasons that you know the whole atari situation happened where it just imploded it wasn't just et that that ruined everything but well it's where they were pushing a, a arcade level games but they didn't have the hardware for it and so people had the expectation of i'm gonna be able to play our car you know arcade games at home and then they weren't <laughs> and the one of the things they started doing i skip i'm putting pac-man in between one just so we didn't watch two pac-mans in a row but uh another thing that was going on was when they would start showing 5200 graphics and not the 2600 graphics but people wouldn't realize that and they would go buy it and they'd be like why does this look so bad uh, and if you've played some of these games, you'll know how bad they were. But this is a pretty long commercial for uh, Pole Position, which was a huge, huge game at the time. And they do not use the 2600 uh, graphics for it. I have it on the 5200 sitting over there, but I, I don't have it. For... This is a long commercial even by today's standards. And, like... Right, yeah. And it's like, well, we'll wait. Hey! Yeah? You look like a real jerk. Well, I am a corporate executive. He stopped exciting things from happening. So what you doing? Well, Muffy, Buffy, Biff Jr. and I are going on our Sunday drive. Oh, no, you ain't. You're going to play Pole Position! died in that um exploded even it, it it starts out that you know I, I can't i know the original vacation was out by this point but it reminds me of the griswolds right off the yeah. bat you know we it's just need the wood grain of the nuclear yeah. family of the 80s well and then you know he's like you know he's an executive he stops anything fun <laughs> you know and they're on their sunday drive and then it's like Bull and then the hand of God <laughs> literally comes out of nowhere. Rod, Todd, this is God. And then, whoop! <laughs> and it's just like, here we go. What's happening? And they, he literally dumps them out. It's like, here we go. Woo! Hoo-hoo! You should all be dead and your car explodes. And I love how they equate like, the game with actually driving. Yes. And, you know, the 5200 graphics look pretty good, but it's making sure it tells you. Very very poorly and it only does it the one time so you know if you blink you don't see that it's 5200 that's well, being shot most of the gameplay is you see dead person literally right there part of the video if most of the video is this weird like, yeah them in the cars yeah. but at least it shows the game 
you know, and the 5200 graphics aren't that bad, considering that the game itself was really m mind blowing for, excuse me, for the time. Surprised that you know the the big thing that doesn't look that impressive is the explosions, because you it's know like. like Oil yeah, it's just like, <laughs> like that, and whereas in the game, like, tires would fly at you and everything. But it's, like, available for all Atari game and computer systems, so like the Atari 800 computer. But, uh, you yeah, know... That's a weird controller, though. Yeah, well, it's yeah. the 5200, and it's a, a hot mess. But, uh, now we get to, uh, an interesting one. This is Atari's Pac-Man. With Mr. Hooper, well, which... we believe is the second commercial. But... Yeah, I, we're pretty sure it is the second one, since it actually has... Unless this is the first one, and when he died, they quit showing it, and went oh. to the animated one. Either now, they could have done that. So, we're not real sure which one's first. Um, but he died in December of 1982, and this game was released in March of 1982. So, regardless, one of the last things he did besides Sesame Street was this game. I'm and it's sorry. It's they're using Sesame Street, like... Well, character... that girl would be young yeah. enough to have been on Sesame Street. Like, characters that people would have associated <laughs> with educational stuff. Here, play this video game. Yeah, because, you know, Mr. Hooper, like, it, I was like, at first I was like, why is that familiar? And he was like, Sesame Street. And we looked, I was like, oh, God! And, you know, and he did die in 1982, so... This is one of the last things that Will Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Hooper, ever did. So here we go. Grandpa, you want to play Pac-Man? Pac-Man? Horsey. I'll show you, Grandpa. Pac-Man is a video game cartridge you have to buy separately to play on the Atari video computer system. Your parents hook it up to the TV. Those are supposed to be the ghosts after Pac-Man. <gasps> Watch out, Grandpa. Uh, stick with me. You'll get the hang of it. This is the Atari Video Computer System. Pac-Man and other video game cartridges are each sold separately. Oh, that's a very good little uh, thing. You know, I love little... how she's like, these are supposed to be the ghost yeah. actors. Yeah, even, it's like, it, some of them you might not even be able to see because they don't show up. <laughs> because the game couldn't handle it. Because it, yeah. this is it was literally the prototype that they released. Yeah. Which... I'm still blows my I was trying to find the picture my favorite thing that that right Whoa. there Mr. Hooper like what is this horrible thing on this cartridge and what's it doing that's what killed him he's like my life is over yeah, I mean literally he was like there's nothing why would I live anymore I've seen the Everything. worst thing ever yeah. so it wasn't the Cold War no it was yeah the Cold War World War II famine he was born in 1908 so World War I the Korean War the Vietnam War uh, the Great Depression. None of those things killed him. Pac-Man on the 2600 killed him. So, uh, we kid, but, you know, poor Mr. Hooper. This is one of the last things he ever did. God bless him. Now let's go to something else horrible. We're gonna, For a different reason. We're going to the, the game that everybody thinks killed the video game stuff here, which is part of the reason it is not the only. And it is not the worst game ever made by far. There are many worse. It was more of a financial issue than it was like the gameplay issue that probably made like like on the business side of thing where like basically it didn't sell as much as they. Well, made. it sold a ton. It sold two point six million, but of then like one point eight million sent them back. Yeah, and they made a bunch extra, and that caused a problem, but. <clears throat> at first it sold very well and it sold more consoles which the consoles they weren't returning they were returning E.T. and getting different games uh, the thing with E.T. is it he had to make it so fast it literally like it was like five to two weeks like five days to two weeks like it was in a oh, I think it was more than that but I'm gonna check real like quick like he he didn't have a lot of time and it wasn't he didn't but I think he had more than that it wasn't really game played either like you know like game tested and um well they didn't really no they didn't then. do quality they, uh, control like that they like, should have and this is one of the reasons why that kind of stuff would eventually become standard in game making because uh howard scott warshaw that made it made uh yar's revenge which, which is, is a one of the best games at the time and then he made the indiana jones game which is really confusing and and hard and difficult he, but he tried to make games that weren't 
the same cookie cutter type game. He did. It's yeah. just the game. It's like the Atari 2600 is not the place for a adventure type point and click game like he basically made yeah. that out of. Uh, but Steven Spielberg saw it and liked it and they wanted him to do E.T. Um, he had five and a half weeks to make it. I thought five he had more weeks. than that. Yeah. Uh, he They got the rights to make it in July 1982 and they had to have it ready for the Christmas season. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, it took a while to make those cartridges because you have to print them and and copy the files over. And, and I'll just tell you right now, that there are plenty of worse games. So actually, once I figured E.T. out, it's not that bad. I mean, it, it's bad, but it's not. I've played a lot the worse. The biggest problem is they just don't tell you in the game how to play the game. Well, I see. Really that's I don't know if that's true because I've never seen the instruction book. I have two E.T.s. But I just have the cartridges. Well, I've I, never... I mean, like, in the game itself, they don't. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of kids wouldn't read well, instruction manuals. Well, what did Zelda do, though? Zelda, like, you don't necessarily need the instruction manual. But it just it. throws you right in the middle of a screen with no right. weapon, no nothing. Have fun. Yeah. Same thing that did. You know, I mean, think how many kids didn't go into that cave and find that sword and wondering what in the world they're supposed to do and where's the dungeons because there was nothing to tell you. But if you looked in the instruction book... You told you. I, I don't really... While this plays and horrifies us all, let's find out. First off, I love that commercial because it's it's everything that makes Christmas yeah. commercials great. And it's very cinematic, almost like Steven Spielberg himself filmed the commercial. <laughs> so I'm looking at the instruction book right now. It says, your mission is to help E.T. find the three pieces of his interplanetary telephone, call his ship, and guide him to the landing pad in time to be rescued. Do this before E.T.'s energy runs out and you'll win the round and score points. E.T. traverses six steps or sites on planet Earth. Four of these are full of pitfalls, and they are dotted with deep wells into which E.T. can fall. And then it has a fifth site that shows Elliot's house and the Institute of Science and the FBI building. Here, E.T. is taken by the scientist to be studied. The sixth site is a forest setting where E.T. first lands and where the ship will land to pick him up. Right there, it tells you exactly what stuff does. And on the uh, figure where it talks about the holes... It shows them, it shows what a candy piece is, and it shows you how to find out if there's a phone piece in the holes right on the instruction book. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Reading's fun, children. Let's see, there's another page here. Let me zoom in here. Oh, yeah, it tells you about the which one the FBI building is, which one's Elliot's house, the Science Institute. It tells you what the phone parts are. Shows, let's see here. A round ends when E.T. boards the spaceship. At the end of the round, all your bonus points are displayed. If you want to play another round, simply press the controller button. E.T.'s telephone pieces and the candy will be redistributed for him to find again. You can play as many rounds as you like, since your bonus points will accumulate. The game ends when E.T. runs out of energy or when you decide to quit playing. <laughs> Thank you. On each site, E.T. moves through various power zones, while in a power zone, E.T. can execute only one of his extraordinary powers. For example, if E.T. is ready to call a spaceship, he must be in a call ship zone. As E.T. stands in a power zone, the symbol for that zone appears at the top of the screen, which is shown in the figure 4 on the instruction book. At the beginning of each new round, the power zones are randomly changed for each site. Then it tells you on the next page what each of those do. Which, for years, I was like, what? Yeah. 
So it has like the find piece, the phone piece zone, and these are all explained. Send humans back. E.T. can send the FBI agent Elliot and the scientists back to their respective buildings. You have the candy zone. If E.T. eats one of his candy pieces, he'll convert it into energy so he doesn't die. That's helpful. Call <laughs> Elliot zone. Uh, when he has nine pieces of candy, Elliot will take the candy and chase away humans and leave to find a missing phone piece. Elliot will then bring the phone piece to E.T. If he has less than nine pieces, Elliot will take the candy and go back home, a.k.a. and you get points. So if you have all of them, you can get a phone part. You can call the ship, move to a new uh, site where it'll teleport you, and then you have the find phone piece, which will blink in which hole you can go get it. So the instruction book literally tells you what you're supposed to do. Boy, I wish I'd had that as a kid. That would have made me probably like the game a little bit more. Unfortunately, the internet didn't exist. No. So no copies of that were available unless you actually... <clears throat> and, I'll, and I know a lot of people, because it's just like boxes for those old games. They just threw them away and yeah. kept the cartridge, because that's well, all you needed. Quite frankly, as a five-year-old kid, that wouldn't that those booklets wouldn't have lasted around me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, they would have gotten... Stepped my, on, trashed, and spilt, and everything. Yeah. I had all mine because mom and dad kept them in a place, and I was not allowed to tear them up. Because mm-hmm. they're like, if I paid $50 for this... No, I didn't have the boxes, but they they kept it to where you had to have the instruction book in the slip for Nintendo games, uh-huh. so I had them in that. But uh, the, the next one here, we're going to look at two more after this. We have three left. This is the Star Wars arcade game, which, once again, they use the 5200 graphics to show you the game. So, most people didn't have that. So, they were going to be greatly disappointed when they saw what it looked like. So, this is a pretty common commercial that a lot of people know, but I thought I'd add it it's in. Funny. Star Wars. It's great in the arcade. Whoa! TIE Fighters! Fireballs! Coming right out of here! Watch the laser towers! Aim for the tops! Look in the cutout! Use the force! They're coming too fast! It's way! It's way! My shields are gone! Alright! Stop going in! Oh, some game, huh? Some game! In a galaxy of video games, there is only one. Star Wars, the arcade... From Parker Brothers. What's that? Oh, that's just the copyright text. Yeah. I was like, what is that, like, fine print? (laughs) Very stuff for LucasArts, and first off... Why is this not a meme? Look at, look at (laughs) him... (laughs) <laughs> the he latest. doesn't even look real no he doesn't <laughs> it's like Jim Carrey and then first off I will say uh, the game looks pretty good for the Atari 5200 it's like navigating a three dimensional space like, it, it looks pretty good like I would play that but that's not what the, the other one looked like and uh, I love I mean it's like what look at that hair <laughs> some game and I love how, you know, it's like it, they have the Coleco on there. It's like, shh, and the Commodore 64, which, you know, was where most people played games back in the day. Yeah. Because uh, they had the Commodore, which was a huge selling system. So I'm not a lot to say about that because it's just been shown a lot, but it's just his face. That That's funny. And another one that a lot of people know because it's the first time, like, Luigi is really mentioned Something's coming up, the plumbing, poor Luigi's in a bind Giant turtles out to get him, creepy crabs are right behind him Spider flies, sheep or shites, they're all coming out the pipes Mario, where are you? It's Atari Mario Brothers with Mario from Donkey Kong, his brother Luigi, and lots of crazy creatures And it's twice the fun when two play at once, because you need all the help you can get Mario, where are you? Mario Brothers, new from Atari it wasn't until a couple, like maybe, like sometime in the past year or so, that I didn't, I didn't realize that that little game that they're showing here for this yeah. was actually the, here. Yeah. I always thought it was just like a mini game in Mario Three, like you know what I mean? Like, right. I had it on the on NES. I didn't know Mario was on Atari. Mario frankly. looks, they look weird, which of course was what you know they. Ugh, well, but, they look like their Donkey Kong version. Well, you should see what he looks like in the 2600 version. <laughs> it's really bad, and it shouldn't have been that bad. But, you know, the big thing about this is the beginning, you know, where they have the live-action Luigi. The fat Luigi, mind you. He looks like the live-action Mario from the cartoon series. The, 
Mario. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the inspiration. Exactly. Mario Brothers with Mario from and, and of course, they call him, it's the Mario Brothers. You know, because back then we didn't call him Mario. It was Mario. And I've heard a lot of people used to watch Nickelodeon's Total Panic. And when Mario 3 Mario came out, Brothers she was like, Super so Mario time. Brothers 3. And I'm like, Mario? Mario? What is this Mario you talk of? So, you know, even the 5200 and one, it doesn't look like it ran at a very good frame rate. I've never played it on either of these, but uh, I've mostly played it on the NES or in the arcade. We played it in the arcade. All. It was, uh, Kanawha City had a really great arcade in its mall. That's where our movie theater was we used to always go to because it was closer to the Kanawha Mall than the town center where we lived. And <clears throat> it had Mario Bros. It was always cool because you could watch, like, it would bounce on the screen, the Mario, uh -huh. and I'd be like, I want to play this, and I'd last, like, three seconds because a, a two-year-old, three-year-old couldn't understand that you jump under the thing. Yeah. And I just thought you jumped on them or ran into them. And I was like, why am I dying? Then when Super Mario came out, it was even more confusing because you could jump on them and kill them. It's which is the reverse of what yeah, you which were just you were, talking. Yeah, and it's just like okay, so that, that that's a fun old commercial. Not a lot to say about it. This one's the interesting one because you couldn't really do this one anymore because it's kind of it's like an old beer commercial, I guess I'll say. It's you know when they used to make fun of on The Simpsons where it'd be like all these hot women and attractive, you know older teenage to college level boys all fratting together and doing all this stuff it's like they wouldn't do this anymore but it's like look if you play atari 5200 you're going to be this hot sexy whatever and everyone will like you so you, you have, have to do friends. this yeah like i used to have <laughs> The really hot video games come from Atari. We've got Centipede, Ms. Pac-Man, Vanguard, and Galaxian. If you thought it was going to be just another summer, Atari is going to turn your head around. The hot names, the hot games, the hot feels. Yeah, it's gonna be a whole bunch, cause nobody's hotter than Atari this summer. Nobody's hotter than Atari. Uh, of course, um, the video game crash would happen that summer, and uh, nobody would care anymore. Could you imagine if Nintendo Switch did a commercial like that right like, now? First off, look at that guy's hair in the middle. Like, I'm just like, oh, this is the 80s, all right. It is. But, like, the girls, they do the zoom in and out. It's like, like when they're like, zoom, zoom, look, it's pretty women. They got their Atari. This almost reminds me and of, like... Shaking their ass. Like... Like, the whole Bayside thing for Saved by the Bell, except more sexual. And first off, it's like, let's lug out our gigantic 5200. <laughs> there it is. You know. We have a desktop computer. And then it's like, how do we power this? Well, apparently, you know, they have a generator in the sand with, Clean the, energy, with, ladies. with, with the gigantic Atari battery for this thing they don't show. And, and hold on, where's the girl playing the... It, it, it makes it feel like the game is portable, which it is not. <laughs> no, they, it's exactly right. Like, uh, I'm playing with a guitar controller. It's just like, uh, and there's the one where I got... Well, they don't even show you what kind of screen you would need. This right here. Um... 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 Uh... Sure. They are really sexualized with those joysticks. This reminds me of one of those, like, college farcical yeah. things, like Revenge of the Nerd type commercial, like, you know, movies. Like, look at these girls, like, and the boy is just, first off, if that really happened, we were discussing that ahead of time, uh, that would have been amazing if you had, like, the 3D in the air, like. Yeah, you could actually play hologram. Really hot video games come from a I like how one guy, like, smacks him, like, are you dreaming of these hot women with their Atari? We have to chase them. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's the one I was looking for. Please play with my joystick. Oh, no, this is like, please yeah. stick it in my ass. Yeah. 
She's ready for something if that guy's ticking her butt. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's literally what that oh is. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I, I'm just going to leave it since this is our last one. Right here. <laughs> Bad Atari. It's a no wonder that two months after this it would go. <laughs> the oh. sad is they could have really been a great company. Well, if for... the fifty two hundred came out two two years earlier, like it could have. Yeah, it would have really been great. They would have had nothing stopping them. And of course, then Nintendo wanted to release through Atari, and they were like, uh, "No," which is crazy because what they could have done Licensing. is licensed it and then never released it. Yeah. And they could have kept it from, you know, and they didn't do that either. I mean, they literally could have kept Nintendo from ever being anything here. And they didn't. <laughs> so, interesting to see that. But this has gone on quite a while. This is 35 minutes. So. <laughs> it's been fun just to talk rambling about stuff. So, I hope that you enjoyed looking at Atari commercials. I did take these offline. Uh, no one, unless they recorded themselves, which I don't believe, have any real rights to these. So, I don't care to do this. Um, I'm not getting like money for this anyway, so I could care less. But uh, we did get them straight offline. I'm sure you noticed since I'm playing it right off YouTube. <laughs> but uh, this is just the way I thought to do it. It's just like when people play uh, uh, reaction videos and stuff. Yeah. So I don't see an issue doing it. So we hope you enjoyed. If you did, we'll probably look at doing more of these in the future. Not necessarily like moving on to my early NES, looking at stuff. Uh, Maybe Toys R Us commercials and the hills are where the toys are all and all that. Hills is where the toys are. So this is once again still getting longer. <laughs> so bye everybody. Bye. Look at the O face.